Hello everyone. Uh, this is a, I have coming. I'm coming to you with a very interesting uh, news of the maybe this is the second paper globally about the adult onset storage disorders uh, uh, with a review of literature and our experience at Institute of Human Genetics in India for 22 years. This is a retrospective study. So from the pool of around uh, 4,000 5,000 patients. We uh, we studied the how many of them were adult onset, and uh, this paper has recently been published by the JIMD reports uh, of uh, January issue. Uh, what is the essence of this interesting study? We know enough about the uh, now burden of the storage disorders in pediatric group. We know the molecular pathology. We now know also how to prevent them, how to counsel the patients, how to minimize the agony of the families. But adult onset, we never looked. I'll give one example like recently we included in that one, one patient. He was 22 years, adult gaucher. He never knew that he has problem. The only thing he had the 15 years of age, he said I was had some difficulty in walking. I was getting bone pain. So around at 18 years time, then he, they uh, studied the uh, X-ray and they found that he has got unexplained avascular necrosis. They could not find any other cause. So then they looked carefully and evaluated by the physician and he said, oh, this seems to be the gaucher disease. Referred back to us, we did the enzyme study, we did the molecular study, we did the biomarker, it turned out to be the adult onset gaucher disease. And even the one more patient of the gaucher disease, he almost came around 55 years of age. He's a farmer. He has been moving around in the hospitals to one place to other place with a large abdomen, unexplained. Nobody could, everybody, I think most of the time he used to go to the uh, uh, hepatologist and uh, all they say yes, yeah, they've done some unexplained and uh, the enlarged spleen and liver is there, but nobody could at least help them. But then suddenly he went to the, one of the hosp public hospital and the physician. Again, he diagnosed that this may be one of the storage disorder because he found he has got a so mild cytopenia also, he has got a bone pain also. When referred to us, it turned out to be that he has got a gaucher disease. So what I mean to say that the possibly the the null awareness about the diagnosis of the adult onset storage disorders so or lysosomal diseases uh, among the physicians, among the cardiologists, among the dermatologists, among the neurologists, they also need to be brought over. The mudo, most common storage disorders in our cohort of adult onset with Goucher, Febri, Pompey, MPS 1, MPS 4A, and Nimenpik disease type B. Uh, uh, but the Cialica sister, the Cialidosis, M metachromatic leukodystrophies, we identified. But among them, we could not identify the San Filippo like MPS type 3 or even Pompeii or Fabry, they were not poorly represented. So uh, the reason is possibly we will say there is a referral bias and second point is the lack of awareness among the clinician himself. So the patient moves from one place to other place and then finally it takes around pediatric age group we know that it takes the diagnosis time to reach maybe around two years to six years. When adult age group, I would say that they take the diagnosis and maybe around 10 years to 15 years to 20 years. So clinical pointers also we identified like in a uh, by the storage disorders. So whenever you see the patient who has got unexplained uh, the bone pain or avascular necrosis, has got a very mild hepatosplenomegaly or the mild thrombocytopenia, has got the, some skeletal abnormalities or has got the ataxia, unexplained ataxia and tremors got the, uh, these are uh, the angiokeratoma, the unexplained muscular pain. So these are the clinical pointers for the diagnosis of the adult onset story disorders. The most common in our group also the Febri, though Goucher was the most common, maybe because of it is the one of the common story disorders found in India due to the altipropy as a common mutations in 60% of the cases. Here again also we found the altipropy one of the common mutations in the adult population also. but we could not identify any other common mutations spectrum in this adult group of Febri or Pompeo or any other storage disorders. Perhaps the number of those adult uh, the affected patients are less. 
Fabry uh, like mostly I think the angiokeratoma. So mostly most of the time we got it after from the dermatologist. So that indicates that dermatologists they need the awareness among uh, the uh, among themselves because these are only the people who work in the public hospitals or teaching hospitals. They they know about about it and then they when they con they could not find out. Similarly for the Pompey. Pompey also many times I think they may not have the any uh, any other involvement except the cardiac involvement uh, but except the uh, the muscular pain or the muscle myopathy and this was again identified by the neurologist. Similarly, interestingly, the case of the uh, metachromatic leukodystrophy and the uh, uh, CLE case history disorders was identified by the neurologist based on the years got ataxia and tremors and it was not explained any other was not fitting in any other clinical diagnosis so he referred and then it turned out to be the storage disorders of the adult onset and so once we okay once we diagnose them what is important also that we are able to give the better life the better the very improved mobility like the therapy is available for example i would say the fabry disease we have one fabry patient who had got at around 25 years of age, he had got a stroke and then noticed, oh, he had got angiokeratoma also. And then he started with the replacement therapy. It was much late. So once we identify these patients and early onset, or maybe around at 15 years or 20 years of the time, at least the therapy like for gaucher, like ERT, or maybe the substance reduction therapy is there, for February enzyme replacement therapy is there, even for Pompeo enzyme replacement therapy is there. So at least we give them a better life and save these patients from the mortality and also save the burden of the family, the psychiatric trauma, the financial stress they carry on uh, if we make the diagnosis uh, at much, much earlier. So essence of these papers is to bring the awareness among all the group, be it pediatricians or the mostly the adult clinicians, those involved in the care of the patients that please Keep in mind that storage disorders are also one of the rare genetic disorders and when you see in your clinical practice as I said before mentioned about the clinical pointer, think for the storage disorders and now the diagnosis is very easy, simple enzyme based diagnosis and once you found that enzymatically confirmed, we can do the further confirmation by genetic studies. Uh, for the same, so then do the casual studies or the other unaffected sibling or other pop, other siblings in the family can be identified at an earlier age, and then we get they provide the better counselling. So this is a very interesting and first report from the India, and perhaps second global report about the adult onset lasagma story disorders. I am sure this remind me our first publication in 2004 for the pediatric group of the storage disorders in India and to now we see that the, there is highest burden I would say among the genetic disease the among metabolic group is the lysosomal storage disorders uh, is there same way I am sure that in coming by five years or ten years time we will see many of the adult patients will have the uh, it will be identified will be diagnosed and will be offered the therapy uh, for the for the disease so that's how we'll be helping the families helping the nations on helping the society also by this study thank you so much